Making its first appearance in the 2002 film Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones, the planet Kamino is a stormy world of endless oceans and is the homeworld of the Kaminoan civilization. Kaminoans are an amphibious species of tall, lithe, bipedal humanoids with pale skin, large dark eyes, and elongated necks. They stand on average 2.4 meters tall with an average weight of approximately 100 kilograms. Although a rather reclusive species, they are known for their exceptional knowledge of exogenetics and their advanced skills in cloning. The planet of Camino is an oceanic terrestrial with a surface water coverage of nearly 100%. It is said that a few mountain peaks still break the ocean surface and form small islands, but these are so sparse and highly eroded that they are of no practical value to the Kaminoans. The planet is 51% larger than Earth, and based on its reported sea level gravity of 1g, it has a calculated mass of 2.28 Earth masses, giving it a mean density of 3.64 grams per cubic centimeter. This density is rather low for a terrestrial planet and suggests that the composition of Camino is predominantly rocky and possesses only a small metallic core. This could also mean that it has only a weak geomagnetic field protecting its atmosphere from stellar erosion. Almost nothing is known about the star that Camino orbits except that it is a single star and also named Camino, as is the custom in the Star Wars galaxy. The planet Camino is the fifth planet of 13 in the system and orbits its parent star with a period of 463 days or 411.55 local days given the planet's 27-hour synodic rotation period. It is rather unlikely that a species like the Kaminoans would evolve legs and the musculature needed to walk upright had their planet always been fully covered in water. Indeed, it is said that Camino once possessed extensive land masses within relatively recent geological history. Unfortunately, the exact circumstances that led to the planet's flooding are known only to the Kaminoans. But the most likely explanation is that Camino was once much colder and had most of its water locked up in large polar ice caps. But then a climate shift took place that warmed the planet and caused the ice caps to melt, raising sea level to the planet's topographic peak. As to the cause of this climate shift, we can only speculate but it is most commonly hypothesized that Camino's sun increased in luminosity as it neared the end of its lifespan on the main sequence, causing temperatures on Camino to rise. This could very well be the case if Camino orbits a star of similar mass to our own, based on its orbital period, it would orbit nearly 20% farther from its star. While the star was still young, Camino would have received 25% less energy from the star's light than Earth receives from the sun. Assuming Camino had atmospheric properties similar to Earth's, this would give it a lower average temperature and cause its ice caps to advance beyond the planet's polar regions. It's possible that this is what Camino looked like when land animals thrived on the planet and the Kaminoan civilization arose. But then, after the warming event took place, the ice caps would have begun melting, lowering the albedo of the planet and causing the average temperature to increase, starting a positive feedback loop and resulting in the entirety of the polar ice caps melting. Once its surface was completely flooded, the planet's now very low albedo would lead to a rise in temperatures and seawater evaporation, which would drive large quantities of water vapor into the atmosphere. Water vapor is a strong greenhouse gas and would trap even more heat, providing the energy for Camino's powerful and widespread storms. And with the planet lacking continental landmasses to break up these storms, they are able to grow to immense strength and sustain themselves for weeks on end. The flooding of Camino's surface clearly kicked off a mass extinction event that led to the demise of all of the planet's terrestrial life forms, save for the Kaminoan people who were able to move their cities onto stilts over the several hundred to few thousand years it took for the land masses to be completely covered. But this mass extinction event is probably still ongoing. The biospheres of oceanic worlds planets with more than 99% surface water coverage, are expected to suffer from nutrient deficiencies. On Earth, the rocks that make up the continental land masses are eroded by wind and water and their mineral nutrients are transported out into the oceans where they feed the microscopic life forms that occupy the bottom of the food chain. But on worlds with no exposed continents to erode, this nutrient infusion cannot occur. 
Ocean currents are able to erode the seafloor in shallow areas, but the deeper underwater the seafloor lies, the less erosion it will experience and the shorter the distance any freed nutrients can be transported. This leaves submarine volcanism as the primary source of mineral nutrient dispersion, but this is a substantially limited source compared to continental erosion. A further detriment to the Camino's ecosystem is the limited amount of sunlight that is able to penetrate the planet's thick and widespread cloud coverage. This deprives the planet's photosynthesizing life forms, the Camino equivalent of algae, phytoplankton, and aquatic plant life, of the energy they need to survive. Sunlight does break through the clouds in various locations on Camino every day, but the locations and duration of these events are essentially random and too inconsistent to be relied upon for photosynthetic processes. There are probably ways in which life forms could evolve to handle this issue, but the climate shift that led to this likely occurred too quickly for such adaptations to develop. And with deficiencies of both nutrients and energy threatening the life forms at the bottom of the planet's food chain, Camino's entire ecosystem is likely in the process of collapsing. Camino is said to be orbited by three moons, but virtually nothing is known about these satellites other than the smallest being named Corossa. It is said that this moon is the only one to have been explored by the Kaminoans and is covered in frozen wastes. However, both of these claims seem rather unlikely. So how does Camino stack up against a realistic planet? Camino's mean density is abnormally low for a planet of its mass, but both of these properties are still within a realistic range. Such low metal content planets are indeed possible. Now, whether Camino would be habitable in the first place having a core size that low is a different discussion. But beyond that, it's pretty well built. So, plus one point. Aside from its orbital period, nothing is known about the orbit of Camino about its star. So, zero points. There is no way to truly assess how accurate the climate of Camino is, given how little data is available for its orbital characteristics and the parameters of its star. But its climate is at least plausible if we make some reasonable assumptions. In other words, there's no obvious reason it couldn't exist as it is depicted. So, plus one point. Camino having three major moons is problematic. Terrestrial planets aren't capable of forming multiple spherical moons, as once the first one forms, it dominates the orbital space around the planet and prevents the formation of subsequent major moons. So, negative one point. There is no data available for the star that Camino orbits, so zero points. With a total of one point, the planet Camino from Star Wars receives a D grade. But its passing grade is only a small consolation. Camino was my favorite planet from the prequel trilogy of Star Wars, and it is saddening to now find that that unique and mysterious planet is actually a dying world in the tempestuous throes of its final extinction event. But time and tide wait for no one, and my course is already set for the star of yet another alien world. I hope you will join me there. Until then, may the Force be with you.